Hey everyone, Daryl here in the JCR Off-Road Garage on a cold, snowy Sunday, and I realized that I haven't made a video about that Jeep right there. That is my wife and I, 79 Jeep Cherokee Chief, and we did kind of a restoration on the interior um, and the suspension and stuff last year, but it's gonna get some upgrades here pretty soon, and I figured while it's still drivable, I should take it outside and kind of walk you around it. So first we have to see if it's gonna get started. Um, still the carbureted AMC 360, really cold right now, hasn't ran in weeks, months, I don't know. So let's, let's get that going first. All right, step one is to see if there's any battery at all. Let's see here. Not looking great on that. So um, jump box, let's try. Try to give her a jump. Okay, got jump box hooked up here. Let's check some voltage. You know what? I'm just gonna hit this right away with some starting fluid because just right on the filter. That's how we party around here. <laughs> okay. Come on, girl. <laughs> Oh, geez. It's going to be an ordeal. Are you working, Mr. Jump Box? Hello. Hello, Jump Box. Try her again. Oh, so close. Dang it. This is always the dance with vehicles that sit and jump boxes that are too smart for their own good. Here we go again. Yeah! All right, there she is, our 79 Jeep Cherokee Chief. So we actually bought this from Pete. If you know Pete, he has that blue turbocharged LJ. Um, he bought it from someone in Michigan who was gonna turn it into a plow truck. So we kind of saved it um, from becoming a rusty Michigan plow truck. It's a California Jeep. The previous owner did some work to it. Uh, this paint job isn't original. So they, they had it painted this blue. It was like a robin's egg blue from the factory, um, but really solid Jeep. Pete uh, wasn't sure what he's gonna do with it, so I convinced him to sell it to me and uh, and we were, did a little restoration on it. So it came with no interior. It came with some you know steel wheels, no lift, none of that. So this is where it sits right now. I'll kind of walk you around it and then I'll show you the interior. We did the stripes here. So the Cherokee Chief stripes, that was all done at JCR. The wheels are from Mamba. Uh, tires are 33. No, they're metric, aren't they? Let's check. Yeah, 295, 70, 17 Falcon Wild Peak. So that's like a 33, 33 and a half, basically. Um, custom sliders that I built for this kind of based on our classic sliders. That's a Cherokee roof rack, our old style Cherokee roof rack with some modded side mounts. The 50 inch rigid, not sure on it. We had it here. Um, it looks really naked without a light bar or without lights in there, but I'm not sure. I love the rigid. Um, it looks better than nothing, but maybe four or five small round lights. I'm not sure. What do you think? How do you feel about the rectangular light bar on an older Jeep? Um, the front bumper obviously is tweaked. We're going to build bumpers for this guy eventually. It's just been crazy busy around here. So we'll do some one-off stuff. 
that's a reproduction grill. And then I put the older style badge on it in place of the AMC style badge. I kind of like that round badge. And then truck light or rigid headlights, whatever you want to call them. Really dig the look from the front. So in 79, they had a blackout grill option for this. It looks really cool. So Amber and I have been kind of debating on if we're going to black this grill out or not. But for now, that's what we decided to do. I'm just going to kind of jump all around here. Underneath, uh, BDS, four inch lift kit, uh, spring under front, spring over rear. That's the stock Dana 44 with nitro 430 gears, nitro helical limited slip, nitro diff cover, and then nitro shafts. And then it has 30 spline outers and nitro dry flanges. So super beefy front end. That's a hook from a Rubicon. JK Rubicon made a tow hook out of it. And then that's just our one ton steering custom length. And then a BDS steering stabilizer hiding back there. So the first thing I did when I got it to the shop is um, put it up on the hoist and just power washed everything underneath, painted it all chassis black. It was in pretty good shape. Like I said, California truck, so not a ton of rust. So it cleaned up pretty nice. And like I said, that's just chassis black paint. And then there are the nitro flanges. Super beef. So that's all 30 spline stuff. Oh, these mirrors are eBay cheapies. I'm not 100% sure what they're from. They look nice, but the quarter windows can't open all the way with them on there. So I'm going to have to come up with something else for those. The paint is cheap. <laughs> it is what it is. It's one of those quick spray jobs, not well done. We cleaned it up the best we could. It's got a nice shine to it, but it's got a bunch of orange peel. The clear isn't great. I'm not sure what we're gonna, oh, it had tow mirrors on it too. The plow guy decided he was gonna <laughs> put tow mirrors on it. So we just put some plugs in there for now until we decide if we're gonna paint it, if we're gonna leave it, what we're gonna do. It's a cool color. I just don't know if it's the right color for the Jeep. What do you think? It's definitely a neat color. So walking around to the back, all new marker lights and all that from BJ's. It's cool that they reproduce a lot of this stuff. That's the back, another bumper that's beat up that we got to replace. These bumpers and these things were actually aluminum. Pretty crazy. So these are all cracked. So we'll do a rear bumper as well. Um, I did a reproduction of the Jeep parts hitch. It didn't have a hitch on it at all. So I kind of found some photos and did a reproduction of that hitch and then remade the label too, cause we're just dumb here. But <laughs> same thing in the rear, nitro gift, nitro gift, nitro diff cover, uh, 430 gears, nitro helical limited slip. So on the wide track, waggies the diffs are offset but they're offset five inches where the wide track or i'm sorry the narrow track offsets quite a bit more eight to ten inches so i think jeep used the same shaft on the driver's side and just added the five inches of length on the passenger side so it's not totally offset but it's not totally centered either kind of an odd an odd duck and the same deal bds four inch lift over the axle back here with their NX2 Nitro shocks. That's pretty great. Um, you know, for the first week or so, it rode pretty stiff. And then once those springs broke in, it actually rides fantastic for a leaf sprung truck. And then Cameron here, hand painted the old school four wheel drive badge there for us. So that's pretty cool. So we did a Kilo Century remote start on this thing and kind of made it really handy to lower the rear window. <laughs> Just so you don't have to go inside the vehicle and turn the key on to lower the rear window. So uh, did a full custom headliner on that. So that is a diamond stitch vinyl. And that was such a bear. Uh, Amber and I repurposed the factory 
boards. And if you ever mess with those things, they are a pain. So we added some fiberglass and some fiberglass bows to try to get some life out of it. You can see there's a little bulge in the front, in the center, that's kind of where these bulge, but if that's all that we get, I think we'll be good. That's a whole season uh, in the heat and stuff. So but yeah, digging that headliner. And then you can kind of see that's not a factory seat. That's a JKU, a JKU rear seat. So it folds, but it doesn't fold all the way, but I can show you that in the front here. So interior, we spent a ton of time, like I said, this Jeep didn't have an interior at all. <laughs> so it had a dash and it had a steering wheel and that kind of stuff, but, but no interior to speak of. So pretty proud of this. This is Amber and mine's first interior job. So back away so you can see a little bit. These are JKU seats, 12 or 13 model year with catskin leather covers, just the off the shelf catskin covers, black on black. And then back there is the same JKU rear seat, black on black. Factory belts, I'm gonna have to do something with those. I want to make them a little longer. They're kind of short as they sit. This. Uh, console is from a Mountaineer, like an 02 or an 03 Mountaineer. So we chopped it short, so you still have full AC vents and all that. And then we upholstered it with diamond stitch, a little bit of chrome door edge trim there to make it look a little more retro. And then elevator switches there in chrome. And we'll kind of get either like a universal S pod or whatever to attach those two here soon. Um, but I just have those in there right now, so we're ready to be wired up to whatever switch system that we want. Cheapy eBay Bluetooth stereo and the original clock. Took that apart and cleaned it up. It runs a little slow, but it works. So I think that's super rad. And then um, in here, so still running the quarter track. So we have the vacuum emergency drive for that. Uh, my AEM wideband is hiding in here so I can tune the carb and then a reproduction of the original manual. Uh, factory AC. And then Brian from Assy's Design Works carried on that front badge here for me and the horn button. So we kind of carried that through. So I tore the gauges apart, cleaned them up, uh, used some orange nail polish of all things to redo the needles. And then we matched that with an auto meter tack so that's an orange needle, obviously, and then the chrome bezel, the kind of kind of retro look. Um, gear indicator is uh, aftermarket job. I'm not exactly sure what it was. It doesn't work perfectly. These things, these things always break. These are these are garbage, <laughs> but they have to work with the tilt column. So come up with something better for that. And then you can't see out here, but it's all LED lighting. So all LED lighting in blue. And then, like I said, a reproduction carpet, aftermarket carpet. And then we went with a Sissel style or whatever you want to call it, matte. Keep it a little retro. So all the upholstery we did ourselves, uh, the door cards took quite a bit of time just trying to design them and stuff. So that's leather upper and lower with a little darker black leather diamond stitch pattern in the center. Um, those are Falcon armrest, Ford Falcon armrest. I really dig that chrome look to them. I like how slim they are. And then Kicker KS Series components. I think they're KS Series. Um, six and a half with the tweeter in the door. And then the amp and the sound processor for those Kicker components are under the driver seat right there. And then under the passenger seat, we have a Kicker hideaway there, a little eight inch powered subwoofer box. So we took a bunch of time on the interior. Um, oh, I forgot the, the roof and the inner panels here quarter panels on the floor are all soundproofed as well. So we did that before we put any of the uh, finishes on top of that, just to quiet it up. And then we painted, we painted this all black in here. Usually this is body color around the window, but we weren't sure what the body color was gonna be. So we just went with like a satin black, just to kind of keep that whole black theme going. Oh, it looks like I still need to get, like I said, a work in progress. I still need to get that light cover for that rear dome light. 
I think that's everything inside. And then we went through the doors, uh, all new window seals, uh, kind of did some work on the door hinges and the door latches because uh, those weren't working properly. So now we've got just this great solid sounding door. Yeah. All right, you already saw this, but I'll show you again. Uh, this is the original AMC 360. The previous owner put, or one previous owner put, Edelbrock valve covers, an Edelbrock intake, uh, Edelbrock carburetor on it. I put the air cleaner on it, switched it over to GM HEI because the factory ignition, there it is, melted on the fender liner. Uh, so I switched it over to HEI just for simplicity's sake. Rebuilt the carb, got it running pretty well. Um, I wanted to leave the carb on this and not go EFI for a year because I don't never learned how to work on carbs. So I figured the best way to deal with that is just to throw myself into it. So definitely got schooled <laughs> to say the least. We went to Colorado. We had some trouble at elevation with, uh, with vapor lock and heat soak or whatever you want to call it. Um, so we definitely got through that. We had a great trip. It was super fun, but I'm kind of over, uh, over the carb thing at this point. I kind of learned how to how to tune it and how to work on it. So I'll show you what's going in here in a second. Um, but yeah, AMC 360, I don't know what's done internally, if anything was done internally. I don't know the history, it runs pretty well, runs strong, uh, considering this is only supposed to have like 140 horsepower or 50 or whatever this year. Uh, TH400 that showed up with the wrong modulator in it, so it wasn't shifting at all. It had like the the Chevy small modulator in it, and it was just a, a mess. So I got that dialed in, so it's shifting great again. And then the quadra track, that seems to be fine. Um, no trouble with that at all. So pretty standard. Uh, it's a mess. It's covered in dust right now. I just went through and cleaned it up the best I could, knowing that in a year I was gonna I was gonna pull it all out of here. So. So I think that's it. I don't think that I've missed anything on this guy. If you have any questions about it, you know, uh, shoot them in the comments. And I will walk inside and I'll show you what's well, getting swapped into this guy. Let's go for a walk. All right, excuse the mess in here. It's been, <laughs> we had a crazy week last week, but so everything's kind of a mess. So, you know, the AMC was fine and I could have definitely just put fuel injection on it, um, TBI or whatnot, it would have been great, but I wanted something a little more modern. So light on here. So I nabbed this 6.2 LS from an 07 Escalade, uh, went through that, cleaned it up, painted it, obviously. They don't come all black like that from the factory, but put a small cam in it from Texas Speed, uh, all the valve stuff to handle that, new water pump, new oil pump, new timing chain, blah, blah, blah. Cleaned up all the accessories. Just kind of mocked up the accessory drive here. Worried about two things. I'm not sure how that AC compressor right there is gonna jive with my passenger drop axle. And I'm not sure how that alternator right there is gonna jive with my steering box. But I wanted to keep everything low uh, and clean from the top. So there wasn't a bunch of stuff sticking up above this LS3 intake manifold. So that's all mocked up and ready to get mated to this. Oh, there's our JL. This is a 6L80 that I just got painted yesterday. So unknown mileage on it, but we'll see, see how it does. It's supposed to be pretty great transmissions up to a certain torque level. And we're going to stay under that. So I'm keeping the stock converter for right now too. So I went with a smaller cam so I could keep the stock converter because we're going to tow and we're going to four wheel and we're going to do all that. So I didn't want to mess with the stall converter. So, so that's it. I think that's everything about the chief. This video seems like it's going to be pretty long, so I'm sorry. Um, I'll do some short videos and photos while I'm putting uh, that LS in. I've got some fun plans for that. So kind of going to make a really nice clean engine bay for that. So follow along as I do that. Thanks for watching. Like I said, if you have questions about this Jeep, any of our Jeeps here, questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing with this LS. I'll try to answer them. I'm pretty new to this platform. Like I'm, this is my first build for an LS. So I'm, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, but if you have questions about how I got here, awesome. I'll answer those. So anyways, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.